All flight controllers coming around the room for a go, no go per the LCC. Prop. Go. GNC. Go. go. Guidance. Go. Fido. Go. I'll come back to you, GC. DPS. We're go. Payloads. Go. Eagle. We're go. Econ. We're go. FAO. Go. Enco. Go. Max. Go. Booster. Go. Surgeon. Go. Booyaka shot. Check it out, I is here with none other than my main man, Buzz Aldrin. I know this is a sensitive question, but what was it like not being the first man on the moon? Was you ever jealous of Louis Armstrong? He was Neil Armstrong, and no, I was not jealous. He was a very, very Whatever. qualified person, yeah. So, when you arrived on the moon, was the people who lived there very friendly, or was they scared of you? There was absolutely no thought of encountering any living being whatsoever. Do you think man will ever walk on the sun? No. The sun is too hot. It is not a good place to go to. What happens if they went in winter when the sun is cold? The sun is not cold in the winter. We know you've been asked this a zillion times. It must really get in your tits being asked it. But let's just sort it out. What do you say to all those conspiracy theorists who come up to you and say, does the moon really exist? I don't think there are very many people who question whether the moon exists. It wow. exists. And all right, you just heard it here. It does exist. So all those people out there who are saying it don't, you was wrong. That's right. The moon does exist, and we went there. Yo, listen up. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and... And that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. So listen up. You was heard about the moon and about space. You better learn about these things from my man Buzz Lightyear here. So you better realize that these things is important. Big up yourself, Buzz. Keep it real. Brought to you by the all-new Alien Autopsy Doll from Hoax Cult. I will now open the door with my mind. I am influencing physical objects around me with the power of my brain. Do you think I did? Or did it just look that way? We have a saying in science. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Things like psychic projections, visitors from outer space, physical objects passing through people's bodies, or things that just seem to defy the laws of science. Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of See, scientists try to understand the world. That's what we do. When we see or hear about something wild or unusual, we check it out with science. So I am now going to make a wild, way out, extraordinary claim. The world is round. Well, this is a wild claim, because if you look at the ocean or a lake, it looks flat. Look at that. Look how straight and flat that horizon is. Looks flat, doesn't it? See, it looks like a table or a board. Now, once in a while, you might see mountains or hills, but those are just like little bumps on what looks like a flat earth. Well, here's what happened. People noticed that the place that we seem to be living would every now and then cast a shadow on the moon. And when it did, that shadow was always round. Now, the only shape we know of that always casts a round shadow is a ball. Take a look at this. It's our curvature of the Earth horizon model of science! And this blue stuff is like the ocean. And this boat, well, it's like, like a boat. Anyway, watch. <clears throat> a 
as ships sail away. They don't disappear all at once. Now first, the bottom will disappear. See, the bottom of the ship is gone. Now we can see midway up, and then the whole thing disappears. Now ships came back, they didn't fall off a table. So people realized that the world is curved. I mean, it's a big curve, but it's curved. So, the process of testing claims, the world is flat, the world is round, is what we call science. Now, if you have a claim that can't be tested, that's what we call pseudoscience. The difference between pseudoscience and regular science is whether or not you can test it. The flat Earth, well, that didn't stand up to tests. The round Earth did. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. The world is round. I'm out of here. That's just a cheap TV effect we're going for. Look what's that up in the sky? It's an object we can't identify. Hey, check out that big footprint. What's it from? I'll give you a hint. It's the new Hoaxer 2000. Yes, the Hoaxer 2000. Everything you need to fool your neighbors. This fabulous kit includes one flying saucer, two feet, one alien head. And if you order now, you'll get an added bonus. We'll throw in a genuine alien abduction affidavit that you can sign and swear to your friends that you've been kidnapped by aliens. Hoaxer 2000. What are some of the easiest ways that you can prove that the Earth is round? Because apparently this is something that we're debating. I, I have no idea why. It, that's a hard thing for me to even start talking about because there are so many proofs that the Earth is round, it's difficult to know where to start. And it's not okay to think that the Earth is flat. This is not a viable argument. Um, I have friends who have been on the International Space Station. They have orbited the Earth once every 90 minutes. You know, I have had personal experience with people that have been up in space and can see with their own eyes that the Earth is round. And of course, we've taken all these amazing pictures from space. They're so beautiful, all those pictures of the Earth. So I don't really know what's going on right now with this Earth is flat thing. But I will tell you that this is one of the things I really enjoyed teaching my own astronomy class about. Because there are proofs all around you. It is not difficult to know that the Earth is round. In fact, people have known this for way more than 2,000 years. The ancient Greeks actually had a number of really elegant, wonderful proofs that the Earth was a sphere. So let's start from the simple to the slightly more complicated. One of the things you can see yourself with a pair of binoculars is if you actually go out to a lake and there are boats on that lake, the farther away a boat is, the more the bottom of the boat will disappear and you'll basically just see the mast of the boat. And as a boat goes farther and farther away, the last thing you will see is the very top of the mast of that boat. And that's because the boat is actually going over the horizon that's curved. And that means that as it goes farther and farther away, you see less and less of the bottom of it and more of the top of that. You can see that with binoculars, by an ocean, by a lake. It's really easy. That wouldn't happen if the Earth were flat. You would simply see the boat getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it went farther away, but you'd be able to see the whole thing with the same proportions. This would be, to this scale, a mile away. Show us where the International Space Station is, Hubble, et cetera. Where oh, okay, so if the Earth were actually this, uh, this size, uh, the International Space Station would be orbiting about a half an inch above the surface. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, <laughs> what's his name, Felix! Felix Bumgardner, uh, he would have been about two millimeters above the surface of this globe. That's his edge of space jump. <laughs> now, so, you know, I, I don't, it's fine. He wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. Right. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. <laughs> it is, you just don't. That stuff is flat. 
And then I showed examples of wide angle lenses, curving, horizontal. I tweeted that. You did. But I don't want to be a, a spoil, you know, curmudgeon or anything. I just wanted to put, I don't. <laughs> There's so much to actually be impressed with in the universe. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be distracted by things that are not. That's all I'm trying to say. Then if, you're, if you'd like, look at pictures from space where you see the Earth as a sphere. Those pictures are not faked. And I'll tell you, just if nothing else, here's why you can tell they're not faked. In 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmon made this, and it had wide appeal too. For example, it ended up as the default background on the iPhone. I didn't even know until I bought an iPhone um, and turned it on and kind of did a little happy dance. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is, a composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. The, to us, the really cool thing was the data set. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. So the land layer here comes from... The Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectral Radiometer aboard Terra. And the tricky part here was the weather. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it has to be. Just to create the paperwork that NASA has created, for in NASA in this one case, just the paperwork to send anything out in space, to send people into orbit or to send them to the moon. That amount of paperwork would make faking it prohibitively expensive. No one could afford to generate that much, that much documentation. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. This just got real, y'all. Uh-oh. I'm gonna tell you, looks like we've got ourselves a code red science emergency. So I'm gonna have to do something I rarely do. I gotta hit the science panic button. Science emergency defense program initiated. Science emergency defense program initiated. Oh my God. Science emergency defense program initiated. <laughs> I'm trying to eat my dinner. I got your distress I call. I is everything okay? No, Neil. Everything is not okay. This B.O.B. BS about the Earth being flat is getting out of control. Can you please help us? All uh, right. Ho hold my sandwich. Oh, sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Here, you take that. Here. Here. You want to Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh. 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 All right. Listen, B.O.B., once and for all. The Earth looks flat because, one, you're not far enough away at your size. Two, your, your size isn't large enough relative to Earth to notice any curvature at all. It's a fundamental fact of calculus and non-Euclidean geometry. Small sections of large curved surfaces will always look flat to little creatures that crawl upon it. But this, but this whole thing, it's just a symptom of a larger problem. There's a growing anti-intellectual strain in this country. That many, that it may be the beginning of the end of our informed democracy. <laughs> of course, in a free society, you can and should think whatever you want. And if you want to think the world is flat, go right ahead. But if you think the world is flat and you have influence over others, as would successful rappers or even presidential candidates, then being wrong becomes being harmful to the health, the wealth, and the security of our citizenry. Discovery and exploration got us out of the caves, and each generation benefits from what previous generations have learned. Isaac Newton, my man, said, 
I have, if I have seen farther than others, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. I get an amen. Woo. So that's right, B.O.B. When you stand on the shoulders of those who came before, you might just see far enough to realize the earth isn't flat. And by the way, this is called gravity. In terms of conspiracy theory content generally, our goal is to promote authoritative content to our users. So we have two principles that guide the way here. That's the first one, is we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Ms. information. Downs, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I only have a minute and a half. And I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your uh, response is to put a box saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. The feeling is definitely there. It's a new morning in America, fresh, vital. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. 